Why, hello there, you Amphiba fans. I'm, I'm trying to find a word that fits good for this show. Anyways, welcome to the analysis of the 16th episode of this season, where even though there may be some small details, there is always more than meets the eye. But I'm certain that most of you really want me to discuss part B of this episode, and I understand your enthusiasm. So without further ado, roll the film. The first part gives us the title Toad to Redemption, where I at first assumed in my title predictions video that it was about Grime, when in reality it turned out to be about none other than Mayor Toadstool, as he's officially revealed to have a change of heart since the Toad Tower incident. And it's mighty ironic how I was just mentioning how much better his character had become over this season in particular, despite his still somewhat materialistic ways. But this episode specifically reveals his soft side, as he admits how the town has grown on him quite a bit, and we witness his more helpful side too. But all is halted once a familiar face from Newtopia appears and addresses the fact that there is no one at the time properly ruling over at Toad Tower. Don't understand why such a noble, caring ruler ever considered wanting another dictator-like figure such as Grime to overtake Toad Tower once more, but... Who am I to judge? Also, it's more necessary to mention just how strangely unique the creature that helped the newts get over to Wartwood looks. As if it could potentially be in some way related to the reptile-like creatures from the episode Night Drivers, or even the reptile frog creature from the introduction. And once again, we only seem to see these types of creatures unless we're on the path away from Newtopia, or if it's used by the Newtopians themselves. So this may all be a hint telling us that the final temple or trial could end up being near Newtopia all over again, leading up to a conference confrontation with King Andreas. But back to the episode, an official emissary named Jacinda is in search of a new toad willing to have the guts bold enough to rebuild the tower, as well as rule over there. Mayor Toadstool, however, is reluctant in doing so, as he considers how he more than likely would prefer to stay in Wartwood. Plus, building the tower is physically impossible, considering the last episode's events that transpired. <clears throat> Marcy. And in spite of Toadstool literally having a full plan to rule over Toad Tower one day on a bulletin board, his change of heart clearly reflects on his present decision decision making. Before I move on to more pressing matters, let me analyze this bulletin board a bit. It's quite interesting to say the least. Number one is at the top left, we can see a reveal of his mother, which looks like Toadstool in a wig. Second is that on the right seems to be a picture of an explorer from the medieval times. I first assumed that this was an actual human, but when I saw just how many fingers he had, not exactly. There's also the deer-like animal in the picture to the right as well, which also confused me. However, this entire thing could seemingly just be a gag. Or another hint showing the connections between animals and amphibia versus what's on Earth. A little bit further into this scene with Toadstool looking over the townspeople is of Ivy helping her mother with tea, more than likely indicating the continuation of her tea training that I do believe will become an even more important element within the show, perhaps some more family past secrets to explore. Anne eventually walks in on Toadstool, who soon asks for her help to tarnish his reputation in front of the emissary. This, of course, is so that she no longer considers him for the position. The first plan from Anne is in order to make the mayor look cowardly, and if that fails, there is always an attempt of making him look flat out and competent. And the third option is just... Yeah, they, they weren't even going to consider that. Mighty interesting, however, that the giant reptile is depicted within the slide, though. During the presentation meeting, Anne mentions that Marcy couldn't join due to her inspecting Frobo for researching purposes. Don't know why she chose to do so inside of an outhouse, but I suppose it was in order to ensure safety for anyone else nearby. And no, this is for sure not the same outhouse from the first temple. And judging by not only how fascinated she was by him at first glance, but her character as a whole, we should have seen this coming. I really just found it strange how she didn't recognize it right away, as she clearly studied almost everything amphibia related during her stay here. Maybe there's more to see within those archives from season one, am I right? But obviously the usual cliche, Anne's plans in destroying Toadstool's status doesn't work, as it makes him look even more fit for the job. That is, until Grimes' original Toad army from before all decide to try and rob Wartwood by threatening to burn down the town, as if they haven't already endured that before. But the mayor stands his ground by protecting the citizens there and conjures up a plan to trick Bog and his followers, soon resulting in an all-out battle compared to the last small quarrel they had with them in Season 1. In the end, Toadstool assumes that the Emissary definitely will consider him as the Toad to take Grimes' place, when it turns out to be the exact opposite. As she explains that they're looking for a cruel, heartless leader to rule the valley, concluding with Bog being the right one for the title, 
and boy does this trigger a ton of alarms. We already know that Bog already had plenty of beef with not only the town, but with Anne specifically after her betrayal in Totax. So I can only imagine how cruel this guy is gonna be while in power. He even states that he's determined to make Grime look like a kind leader in comparison. And well... That's not good. And that reminds me, if Grime saw Habadaya as a political threat to the valley before when Toadstool was less kind, wouldn't that mean that the now redeemed Toadstool is next on the hit list? Just saying. Who's that snug little baby? Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? Uh, should we be watching this? Part B was quite simple, so let's get down with it. Within this part, Maddie is in the middle of performing one of her revival spells to bring a pet flea back to life. But she's interrupted by her three sisters, Ginger, Rosemary, and Lavender, which I'm certain are all references to herb plant life. And Maddie is frustrated with them for getting in the way of her spell casting, reasonably so, and wishes that they grow up, resulting in Marcy eventually meeting her for the first time in order to learn and explore more about the dark arts. So she journeys alongside Maddie in search of all of the materials needed for properly reviving the dead flea, Usually you would want fleas dead, but hey, this is Amphibia for you. There also was a joke spliced into a scene where both Maddie and Marcy mistaken Hapadaya for a rotting corpse. Hey, perfect! Did you girls just mistake me for a corpse? <laughs> no, corpse not, Hop Hop. Hopefully that means absolutely nothing. Maddie's sisters, on the other hand, find a way to somehow grow themselves literally out of desperation and wanting to play with Maddie like in the past. It was interesting to actually see more polywogs like Polly around in Wartwood. Plus, you really have to realize how incredibly mature Polly is compared to most other babies, too. Not to mention. Maddie, with the help of Marcy, is able to get them back to normal, though, and makes time for them seeing them as part of her responsibility as well. Man, what is up with responsibility in this season? Am I the only one seeing this? Anyways, that pretty much just wraps up about what happens in both of these episodes. I do wonder if reviving the dead will ever play a major role in the future, especially since Maddie's book is another thing we see reoccur for this season. Anyone else wanting the revival of Polly and Sprague's parents? Wait, wait, no, they, they probably were swallowed up. Crap, that's devastating. Okay, well, thank you all for watching another awkward analysis video. And as always, stay tuned for more. This has been TNBT, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace!